Hello. Can anyone around here speak basketball? There it is. It's the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. We're going back to back. Welcome to the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast. I am your host, Freddie Rivas, and who are you, sir? I'm the producer on the keys, pushing the buttons, recording the yep. Here we go. Freddie, let's up. What's up? Uh, not too. Yeah, what's <laughs> up? I don't know, man. Uh, just hanging in there, you know? I did say trying let's. To, trying to I enjoy my up. life. Um, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm uh, currently in Belleville right now. And, uh, you know, I've been uh, drinking a little Chianti. So I'm uh, feeling pretty nice. Nice. I like that. <laughs> I like when my mat is comfy. Yeah. And was, drinking you know, Chianti. It's supposed to rain today. The no, sun's out. Please, no fava beans. <laughs> no, not doing a Hannibal thing. Uh, I haven't got to that point yet. Okay. But, uh, you know, very nice Chianti. It's been, uh, it's been a joy, shall I say. Amazing. Um, well, uh, you know, if someone is already listening to this podcast, that means they found us. But if they want to tell people about us or like, you know, sneak into the sewers of Toronto yeah. and like, you know, like shout through the sewers right um different platforms that we're on what uh, you know what platforms are we on how might they know that well we're on like every platform you could imagine for podcasts we've got itunes and stitcher we've got good old spotify you know you're listening to like a good john prine playlist r.i.p and then you want to listen to a podcast there there we are you want to get your basketball content but we're also you know i still put this sucker up on YouTube. And, uh, you know, like I think Freddie uses something called player FM, which kind of brings you back to the old days when you'd flick the dials and listen to the radio. I think that's what that is. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we're on all the other social platforms as well as Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Why not? Yeah. Player yeah. FM. Don't yeah. forget about it. You got to love it. Dunkspodcast.com. What about if, you know, people dunkspodcast.com. Yeah. yeah. What about if people, uh, you know, they just hate their hair and they want to put something over it, but they don't want that something to be itchy. What should they do? Um, well, the best thing that you can ask for is an anti-itch toque. And the only toque that sells that is the Confederacy of Dunks basketball podcast toques. We have plenty for sale right now. Uh, we, you know, with, uh, there's a lot less pollution out there. So they're saying, you know, we're, we're going to have some cooler weather. Maybe won't be as hot. So you're going to need that toque and, uh, no baby powder on that noggin. These are anti itch. You're going to feel great. Love it. Now, if people want to go like a whole kind of like above and beyond mile yeah. and they want to, you know, they want to invest in our podcast and they want us to grow so that like we're a big time, like we can buy a big building and put our name on it. Yeah. You want to go to how, our, might, how might they do that? How might they help us? Well, you want to go to our Patreon page, which is uh, patreon.com slash dunks podcast on our website. We also have a link there for it. You can help subscribe and get some extra content as well as uh, hear the episodes earlier than the, the rest of the people. And as well, just, yeah, help us to support the the pod so that we can we can keep putting new things into it for you to listen to. Well, I think uh, I think we're ready to rock. Matt. Do you feel like you're ready to go? If you're ready to go, just say okay. Okay. Okay, uh, here we go. Um, let's bring on guest uh, guest number one. Um, she's been on the podcast uh, a million times. She's amazing. She's written for a bunch of different uh, incredible, you know, basketball publications, the Raptors, um, many other good ones too, which she'll tell you about. But um, yeah, give it up uh, at home as loud as you can for Katie Heindel. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> it's your song. I missed that song. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, hey, what's up? 
Oh, man. Just hanging in there. Hanging in there and hanging out. Yeah. Hanging in there like that cat on the wall. <laughs> Hang in there, baby. Yes, that's me. Um, please plug some of the uh, amazing things you write for. So it's not just oh, me leaving sure. everyone with, I mean, whatever you now, sure, but later or throughout <laughs> or however you would like to. But I realized that halfway, you know, I, I'm going to stick this next intro. I'm going to stick the landing there. <laughs> but this one, I only mentioned raptors.com. So that's on me. Do you want me to do them now or later? Um, I realized that was pretty confusing. Why don't you go for it right now? Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a newsletter called Basketball Feelings, which is primarily concerned with those two things. So you can subscribe if you like. Uh, I'm a contributor at Dime Magazine. I actually just wrote a very long form deep dive piece there that got published this afternoon on the way NB- the NBA first mismanaged uh, and then kind of turned that into a road to leadership uh, with COVID um, and everything that's happened to them since Rudy Gobert did. Um, And then I'm also doing something called NBA self-isolation watch there every week where I look at every player and what they're doing every week and how everyone, how they're all losing their minds, just like us. (laughs) Losing their minds, just like us. That's uh, (laughs) I feel like that's a pretty good kind of, um, like KD encapsulation, like you're, you it's always beyond basketball. Uh, yeah. a little bit with you, so <laughs> perfect. Yeah, like um, we're all we're all falling in the the Joker acid, right? Is that what we're doing at home? I think so. <laughs> I think most people have a giant vat of cartoonishly green acid <laughs> that that happens to be open um, around for sure. Um, I know. I know. Some mornings I've been so groggy I almost fell into my own personal vat of acid. So <laughs> thankfully, thankfully I haven't. Um, he's got a lot to say about the Joker. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> He was a big fan of the film. I think he saw it about a hundred times or so. Um, no, I, I don't know that. And, I, and I'm slandering this man for no reason. He's incredible. Uh, he's awesome as far as basketball opinions and, and everything. Andre Dupap. Give it up for him. Thank you. Um. <laughs> Andre, all I can say is some people never get good at intro. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Well, you know, it's uh, like I, I do have a, a flower on my lapel that if I squeeze, it, you know, it, it, it has liquid that flies out of it. So um, I'm very Joker like in that way. Yeah, and you know what? I, I was I was slandering you for no reason. If if Andre's <laughs> any Joker, he's the cool Mark Hamill Joker in the Batman oh. animated series. Oh is yeah, that, is that a, kind of a compliment now? Yeah, sure. I, I'm being heard, but I'm seen. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm digging myself a bit of a hole, but um, I got you both here to uh, talk some ball. So, uh, how does that sound? You want to move over to some basketball talk? Do it. Yes. Let's do it. Okay. Maddie, would you give me a whatever sting you got? <laughs> Dr. Grant, my dear Dr. Zach, welcome to Jurassic Park. Dr. Grant? Smooth as hell. That's what we do here on the... Uh, <laughs> Did someone just say Dr. Grant? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Grant. Okay, last dance. Um, we just... Uh, Canada just got episodes three and four. Um, and uh, there will be some spoilers on this podcast. So if you haven't listened to... Or if you haven't watched uh, Last Dance episodes uh, three and four, then go ahead and do that. But um, yeah, it's kind of... It's a Dennis Rodman episode... It's uh, a Phil Jackson episode um, on episode episode four. Obviously, we're still kind of dealing with the three different timelines, you know, the Jordan origins and other origins as well. The Jordan kind of like the last dance year and then also kind of Jordan's career, which uh, I think we, we just got up to the uh, his first championship against Magic Johnson. But um, as a hardcore Raptor fan, you know, this is our season where we're trying to get like our 
you know, not our three peat, but we're it's our it's our chance to defend our title. And I was pretty adamant about that uh, all all year. I mean, like I'm still starting off the podcast with we're going back to back because uh, I do believe we are. But um, all that said, uh, I, you know, this is just for the Raptors fans who are thinking about what a last dance for us might be like. Um, so let's just kind of set the mood here. It's like, you know, 20 years in the future, uh, obviously coronavirus is fully solved um, and everything is like more safe and we're back enjoying documentaries. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, let me start with you, Andre. Um, it's right. 20 years from now. What is the Raptors like this season that just kind of abruptly got suspended? What, what's the documentary called like you know nurse nurse names it something just like phil jackson was like this is going to be the last dance and so sorry the follow-up hmm. is who would be the hardest interview to get okay so are, are we talking about this season the the 2019 2020 or the 2020 2021 season uh sorry 2020 2021 like this is the okay. non Kawhi, the ronde stanley team okay um, as everyone defines it yeah, yeah, it's uh, it, it's called um, half baked. Is, is what it's okay. Called. That's pretty good. That's pretty <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah. It uh, half baked um, subtitle sourdough. Cause, uh, <laughs> a little, little little sour about the cancellation. And you know, I think for the folks, you know, like when they're showing this documentary to their kids, they'll be like. The sourdough is because we all made sourdough starters. <laughs> um, it was early a big in. thing that, yes. that uh, the COVID-19 made us all do. We went so crazy. We were baking sourdough bread. And it's wild because we did it right away. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, so, so who's your like hard to – like it's impossible to get this guy or um, – yeah, I think I think the hardest person to get um, for an interview um, would be um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with uh, Chris Boucher. Um, he 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 seems a little enigmatic, and I'm sure like 20 years in the future he'll be doing something kind of um, interesting and different. And uh, and I think I think he was also very like pivotal this year he was kind of one of those those bench guys that really really stepped up so like the story yeah the story really needs him in there and he needs like at least a good 15 to 20 minutes about you know him coming off the bench and doing everything and being canadian and da 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 da, da. so i think he's going to be the toughest one to get because I just imagine in 20 years, Chris Boucher is going to be doing something um, kind of out, of out of the norm. And maybe, you know, he also doesn't really seem like he, he lo loves talking and wants the spotlight. So I think he's going to, you know, not necessarily jump to the opportunity. I think that's a really good selection. Like I could see Chris Boucher, like it's like, you know, everyone's looking for him. Like, well, you know, where is he? And it's like, he sails now. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're like, well, well, what do you mean? Where is he sailing? It's like last he was seen in French Polynesia, but that was two years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but in, rea in reality, like he's also you know, managing one of his Saint Hubert uh, restaurants in Quebec, and, just, <laughs> and people didn't didn't realize that he was actually yeah, he's, um, he's, in Quebec the whole time. He's, he's still a franchise has, owner. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, he very much has like real ties to Quebec and he's got to, <laughs> you know, he's got to make sure the St. Hubert is like up up to, uh, you know, up to par. Um, That's right. Katie, what's, what, what would this season be called? Like what's our last dance? Okay, I did this, I answered this question based on it being this season, but I think my answer could still work because it's like regardless of what happens with this season – it's still going to flow into next year in a kind of weird, right. elongated, like what was this blip in the middle? So I think uh, I would name it Year None. <laughs> year, year, year None? Year None. Oh, like, I love that. Yeah, because for me, it was kind of playing off the widely held skepticism that the Raptors weren't going to have any kind of season without Kawhi this season, right. but that still works next season. Um, and that it was kind of a blip year, you know, between the championship, not to us, but I think like, you know, the more popular opinion that it was a bit of a blip year between the championship uh, and an inevitable rebuild. 
So, and I think it kind of works, you know, in like a poetic way, like we're look, we're looking back from that safe space in 20 years, as you said. Uh, so it's like, we can, we can look at a season stopped in its tracks by a pandemic, which is what happened, which is still crazy. It's nuts. <laughs> yes. Um, and then again, I thought of based on like this year, who would be a tough get, but this kind of depends on contract renewals for next year, but I'm still going to yeah. say, I thought it could be Surge because if he becomes a celebrity, he is constantly setting the groundwork for becoming. <laughs> then it would be <laughs> <get him. laughs> right. Yes. Um, maybe to his detriment that sometimes he is like setting the groundwork to becoming. And then, um, like Andre, I was trying to think of who would be inclined to become a hermit. I think. <laughs> yeah, I that's think, where I went. Yeah, like well, Boucher's a good answer, and I like to think of him like sailing, and I also like to think of him being like. No, I just own franchises now. <laughs> the way I own franchises, Sammy Bear. Um, but I think maybe OG might be a tough gag because mm. I could also see him, uh, him going real into his like you know his persona, his caricature now, but that becoming yeah. like a real thing, and he's just he's just vanished. I think with OG, you're definitely interviewing him on his terms. He's mm-hmm. like. He's like, I'm available, but He's it's like, got to be. You must, you must find me when the the, the sundial <laughs> yeah. casts a shadow. At He's this, like, <laughs> like on a on a misty morning, like something. Yeah. I don't know why I'm like. He's a he's a wizard in a fantasy novel but um, yeah, i like honestly, it <laughs> what you, in that danny green video he kind of is mm-hmm. like the danny green happy birthday video yeah. that's mysterious i feel like og would be like you'd have to beat him in like a, a round of paintball at sergeant splatters <laughs> just to get <laughs> like sergeant 10 minutes splatters. you know yeah um that still exists sergeant i think splatters? so no, I don't think so. As soon as I said Sergeant <laughs> right. Splatters, I was like, I don't think anyone understands that reference except me. Oh, buddy. Um, I got it. Never yeah. been, but I got it. Yeah. I, I did say the word paintball before, so you can imagine what's splattering. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, mine is way less like cool than your guys. Mine, well, mine's worse <laughs> because it's kind of trying to be cool. Um, so I was trying to play on We the North and I was trying to play on like still the dinosaur thing and then the pandemic thing. So I said more than fossils, <laughs> <laughs> which I think would be like a sonic level eye roll and people would like the documentary wouldn't come out like that. People, <laughs> people would force the name change. Um, so I failed in my own question. That's okay. Uh, my interview though uh and i'm surprised that neither of you went this way but uh my interview like tough to get is actually kyle so in my version kyle is like such a hero but there's some kind of like late career nba disrespect like he doesn't get in the hall of fame or basically the whole reason you know this is this championship or these championships are not as respected as they should be is kind of not dissimilar to how Kyle isn't as respected as he should be. Mm. So in my opinion, it's like he's the last interview you get and he kind of like ties the whole movie together. Yeah. What you need him. You couldn't actually do this without him, but I kind of looked at it as like, he, he is a tough interview to get now, but I think like he's, he's also evolving into this like benevolent dad type. So I feel like in 20, yeah. I thought like in 20 years down the road, like he'd probably be happy to talk about it. Yeah. I also think too, that Kyle kind of, I, I w- he should think of himself this way. And I think maybe he does as the Michael Jordan figure of our run, or at least, you know, mm-hmm. like he, the story is his to tell. So I think he would feel the responsibility to tell the story because if Kyle wasn't telling that story, then um, yeah, you're just missing the central character. I think in, in, in whatever 20 years down the line, the story of the championship is. Yeah. I'm not sure if any of you, um, if any of you watch the, uh, the kind of like, it's like a YouTube documentary, the the Northern uprising, it's kind of like mostly clips and that sort of thing. But uh it's pretty good, and it just shows the kind of intensity of the Masai-Kyle relationship and how integral that was. Mm-hmm. 
and the the sit down interview uh, mid season where he's like, Masai is my manager. That's it. And it's like it's so intense, <laughs> and seeing where we went and like you know their forceful hug. Uh, at Oracle is just like, oh man, to me, that's like, it's like, it's all tied in with Kyle and trust. And, and there's and, so much that behind that hug now, I will say, because now, you know, that's also like right after a cop, like tried to yes. take Masai down to frame him, to falsely frame him. And he had to like, his adrenaline must've just been like rushing. And the first person he sees is Kyle Lowry and like the force of that hug. I think like for the for for the fact that they won, but also for the fact of like what just happened to him, and like that's the first guy that he sees, and like Kyle grabs him. Oh man, there's a lot. There's like we should you could do like an oral history of that hug. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> and like also I'll I'll put it on the record that I would I'd pay a lot of money if you if I could like recreate a scenario just to be like in the middle of that hug, even if I wasn't acknowledged, <laughs> like even if their bodies just like crushed me in the middle. I mean, VR is almost there, man. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to this podcast and you and you are a, a VR developer, take a hard left and please develop my idea ASAP. Um, I think that's good for question number one. Let's do, uh, let's do question number two. Maddie, I don't know if you got any more stings for me, but uh, whatever you got, give it to me. Flapsing, <laughs> you, Jerry. And that, my friends, is the sound of basketball. <laughs> and fax machines were important right, right back well in the day. Be. Sorry, what, what was that, Matt? I'm just saying fax machines were very important back in the day for trades. And maybe oh, yeah. to this day still yeah. are. I'm sure, yeah. Like a uh, fax machine, you know, that's like a, a really old email. Oh, well, so, scanning is sure. so much worse. We got to scan the contracts and stuff in and, oh, God, it's a nightmare. Send a fax. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm we sorry. Come, if we come out fax. of this pandemic, I want faxes to make a comeback. Yeah, I, I, I did not realize how passionate you were about. Faxing. I think you just found your slogan. Send a fax. Don't <laughs> <laughs> be a fool. Yes, send a fax. The sound's not that bad. <laughs> um, okay, okay. Let's uh, start with you on this one, Katie. Sure. Um, bit of a joke question, but uh, you know, you don't have to agree with me and go whichever way you want. Um, so in this hypothetical kind of version, which works in both years mm-hmm. because Serge is on the team both years, but who should the Raptors like Dennis Rodman send to Vegas for 48 hours? And what would Serge do when he arrived to Vegas? So is it who should they send, but then also Serge is going? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, in, in my opinion, it's got to be gotta Serge. Be okay. <laughs> so I put it in the question, but at the same time, really, I guess uh, there are some other fun candidates, but I just feel like party I guy. Yeah, I feel like no one needs it in the way that like Dennis Rodman mm. seemed to like, he needed it to like slake his thirst. <laughs> yeah. And like perform. Um, I don't, I, I feel like Vegas could be an interesting I feel like no one needs it to like play better, but I did think that it might Vegas, like a weird time in Vegas. Maybe I viewed it as like with Serge as either a chaperone or someone who comes and collects you at the end <laughs> yeah. um, would be, would could maybe do something good for some players. Like maybe we'd see like their, more of their full potential if they kind of came out of their shell a little bit in Vegas. So I thought um, Pat McCaw <laughs> <laughs> huh. um, and Stanley Johnson, I think. Could have mm. a lot of fun. Oh, in I Vegas. could see that, but I think you might lose one or both of them <laughs> for good. I feel like Ronde would be really fun in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Um, see, in, the way I was thinking about it is like, all right, it's Surge. There's that's the guy, but really, who is it that's showing up to Vegas to pick him up after he's <laughs> uh, past his deadline? And uh, I feel and like I it's think- Mark. Oh, sorry. I, that's what I was thinking too. Oh, shit. I was exactly <laughs> thinking it's Mark. It's like Andrew. you can't say no to Mark. You mm-hmm. know, if he shows up and he's like, "Buddy, I need you. I can't. I can't keep playing all these minutes. <laughs> I'm old." I think. I think that would be the most convincing person to get Serge back. 
Yeah, I would say Mark or Kyle would be the guys who are like kind of like the old heads who show up and they're like, come on, buddy. Part of me would think like but, Kyle's like, fuck that guy. <laughs> Yeah, Carl. Yeah, Carl. Um, Carl. You, you, know, you guys know our lovable team leader, Carl Lowry. Lowry. Carl. Um, no, but I, I, I do feel like Kyle would just like look at Boucher and he'd be like, you're Surge now. Yeah. Work harder. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I was half thinking um, Norm Powell. I don't know why. Norm Powell just gives me some like low key party vibes, but. Mm, Obviously, yeah. in- that's because do you remember in the summer last summer when he like went on vacation for the first time in a long time and he went to Spain and he was like drunk all the time on Instagram <laughs> on his Instagram videos? Did you see any of those? Yes, yeah, yeah. Norma's going hard and he was eating the weirdest food and I'm pretty sure places were like trolling him. But he was like, this is amazing, the cuisine. And he was always <laughs> just hilarious. like toasted, like sunburned and like <laughs> eyes half open, just like for two weeks straight. I'm proud of you, Norm. <laughs> you go to Italy, you get obliterated, and you eat whatever fancy things they bring no, you. No, it was like cold cuts on a platter and like <laughs> full tomatoes and like shitty looking slices of bread, not toasted, just like bread out. And I, I he was like, this is the way that they, that they do it here. It's your oh. food. And I was like, I think they're like messing with you. <laughs> okay, so this definitely confirms my feelings about Norm going to Vegas. <laughs> I also feel like he maybe has a home in Vegas. I might be wrong, mm. but yeah, maybe. Um, my idea for what Serge would do when he was in Vegas would basically to be like, like his whole thing would he would create a game show out of his small experience in Vegas. Like the whole thing would be <laughs> it would be like a three or four day IG live. <laughs> and it would be like the most viewed IG live of all time. I could see that. Uh, okay, I think it's that's uh, that's pretty good for that silly question. But um, more importantly, I got to read you guys some highlights from my uh, my COVID escape, my 2K player. So Matt, <laughs> and yeah, I'm gonna read you the highlights. I'm gonna read you the good stuff. Um, and then if you have any questions afterwards, uh, I'll, I'll I'll let you uh, field my character, Federico Rivas. Some questions, um, Matt. Uh, I don't know if you got any inspirational music, but if you do, um, you can go ahead and fire that away, please. <laughs> My name is Freddy Rivas. <laughs> Federico. No, no, I was getting there. My 2K <laughs> player is Federico Rivas. <laughs> now, I needed an escape from COVID, so I designed him to play on the Raptors, and I got drafted by the Raptors. So I'm a 6'5 shooting guard. And if, you knew, if you've been listening to this podcast, then you know, uh, you know, I've been struggling. I started on the bench. Uh, it's been a long journey, but right now, uh, this is a really, really kind of positive uh, version of my 2K player, uh, of my segment here. My player, Federico Rivas, in game 46, is currently averaging 13.4 points, mm. 2.2 rebounds, 6.4 assists, that's right, and 43% from the field. 35% from the three-point line, and I've now moved up to six in rookie voting. <laughs> the Raptors are fifth in the East, 27 and 19, and the real Raptors at that time were 32 and 14. So they're still worse with me, which hurts, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm really, I'm trying to like, you know, bridge that gap. And, um, and this is really, really exciting. I can now very lightly dunk in practice. Oh, it's pretty good. Yeah, so uh, I think I'll finish it there. Um, I've had a couple of 30-point games, no worries. But um, Andre, Matt, uh, <laughs> Katie, do you have any questions for my player? When's your bobblehead night? <laughs> I, I wish I knew. Um, I don't think my guy has a bobblehead night, but when the more fans you get and like the more points you score or whatever, you see more like of those big heads of you in the crowd. Mm-hmm. So I'm seeing about three or four a game. That's pretty good. Yeah, you know. Uh, that's pretty strong. Um, you, you inspired me to, uh, to do some research, look up player comps, 
<laughs> and, uh, you know, right now your uh, player is kind of looking like a, um, let's see, a DJ Augustine type, you know. <laughs> Uh, his his 2013-2014, he was averaging 13 points, two rebounds, four and a half assists. Not I bad. S- I love so much that you're saying this because I, I have two. Wait, who, who else do you got for player comps? So because- this, one, this one's relevant. 1986-1987, uh, John Paxton, uh, 11 points, two rebounds, five and a half assists. Mr. Paxton. Good. <laughs> you know, and you said you're 6'5", shooting guard. So that, one's, that one seems pretty pretty close he was six two um let's see who else uh jose calderon shows up um, oh so oh, he's gentlemen yeah <laughs> you know actually yeah, yeah it's true <laughs> this, is, this is a list of gentlemen is what it is you got some some patty mills um, oh my but, god but my real question for you is you're six five uh why can't you rebound more <laughs> Uh, I, I will say that I, I stopped checking my players' tweets because every tweet is about how I don't rebound enough. Um, and it's uh, all I can say is it's pretty hard. And the NBA is a lot of big guys. So, uh, and I'm also out on the wing a lot, right? So mm-hmm. if you're guarding Zach Levine and he's running around the perimeter, you Fair know, when a, sh- when a shot goes up, if I go to crash the boards, it's like I kill my fast break potential. But you know what, though? I'm going, I'm going to just take that on the chin, Andre. 2.2 rebounds is not enough. Uh, and my career high is five rebounds, which is not nice. Do you have any double-doubles? Any? I have three double-doubles. That's uh, they're That's all good. within assists. My career yeah. high in assists is 15. Okay. That, big, that's, that's, a, that's a good distributor. So kudos. It was a big night. Uh, my career high in points is 35, so... No big deal, you know? Um, and, and okay, I'll just leave you with this. The, the games players comps for me right now are um, Dion Waiters, who, by the way, is on the Lakers and playing, okay. um, and uh, Will Barton. There you go. So That's pretty um, good. And you know what? Last little thing I'm going to say, and I really like that the game did this. They just kind of pretend like injuries don't exist. So I'm playing against like Durant and Wall. And, uh, like basically everyone is healthy and in the league, which I'm like, yeah, that's good. It's a video game. Let's not like be extra sad. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, on the note Sorry, of me, Freddie, I have really nothing to say about your video game player. That's totally okay. I but just, I'm happy for you. I just heard <laughs> you kind of like have a small laugh after I made a mention about like, well, I guess this is pretty sad. (laughs) But you know, you're uh, owning it. That's fine. We're all doing our weird things right now. Yeah, Freddie, call me crazy, but I feel like you improved quite a bit from last week. Yeah. I did. I did. You're logging some couple weeks ago. Like I was sure you were going to some, you know, third tier European team. No man, I'm a, I'm like a starter, and I've even I'm starting to close out some games. Now, so. <laughs> okay, you keep no improving. Biggie. That's big, buddy. Uh, uh, okay, here's my last little note. <laughs> I love Gasol so much, but in the game, he's a nightmare. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you're passing the ball, he'll basically holds on to it. He can't score. Period. And oh, then, brutal. yeah, it, it's tough. Um, oh. Okay, but uh, let's let's move on to uh, to our, our our kind of. Um, our next last dance question. Um, Maddie, if you got a sting, would you give me a sting? Uh-oh. Can, Can somebody, somebody get, get nurse, nurse a, a fisherman's, fisherman's friend, friend, please? It's not a COVID cough. It's an ad for fisherman's friend. Everybody just chill. Matt. We are on week three of this sting, still having a cough. I promise you we will get canceled. Okay, No one wants to hear a basketball dribbling and someone coughing in a hall. Um, but uh, let's, let's start with Katie on this one. So um, we're kind of jumping to uh, episode specific now. So mm-hmm. this is just an open-ended question. Take it whichever way you want. But uh, Dennis Rodman, the worm... Were you happy with his portrayal? Like, obviously, it pertains to this season. So it's not like a biography on Dennis Rodman. But 
yeah, like, I, I, did did you enjoy enjoy his portrayal, or you know, was it accurate? How would you feel about it? Yeah, I liked it a lot. I thought that because I like that. I mean, aside from Isaiah Thomas, I like that Bad Boys team a lot. Um, I always mm. have. I really like that they were like, yeah, we're we're just gonna fight like and hit people. That's what <laughs> that's what we do. And they yeah. weren't like shot. They were like, no, that's like our strategy. We're we're gonna hurt you, and they really owned it. Um, and then also, for the most part, most of them are very kind people, right? Like now in their lives, like John yeah. Sally. I don't want to go too far. I could go on about John Sally for days, but like, what a like what an angel. But Rodman, I did like how they kind of handled like the the back and forth, like going to him when he was on that. Uh, Pistons team and how hated he was um, and I really did like the transition and like I guess everything the show has done to show like you know Michael Jordan is kind of an he is an asshole and he's extremely yeah. impatient person like and he was more so while he was uh, playing so like for him to be so impatient and so like I don't know like a hard ass like how much he had patience for Rodman when he came to the team and how like him and Pippen kind of created this like cradle for him almost. And just like yeah. understood the, like how smart of a player he was and like how much of an asset he was to get and the, the way that he was really going to excel and like work for them. Uh, I thought that was like pretty telling. And I like to see that side of like his character. Um, and then for Robin, I thought like he, I mean, he does need like something more on him. Like one episode's obviously not enough at all. Yes, like he's uh-huh. he's obviously one of the most interesting NBA players, in my opinion, ever. Like he's he makes my top five yeah. all time. Opposite far. take from Bill Simmons, but um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like he, I thought it, I thought he, it's interesting because he was such a kind of, I'd like to see more of like the sad parts of his career in a way, and I don't mean that in to like take away from the good stuff, but just like he was really like such an early model. Like some of the things he was getting into would hardly like really make a, make a blip now, but like he was just like the creation of that persona and whether he was kind of like, you know, like messing with like gender, like gender normative, like stereotypes within the league and like what that even looked like. And just like, I think he did create a persona because he is like, was at the time a pretty sad guy that had a lot to like, you know, it was like a, a safe shield for him. So that, I think that's like always been extremely interesting to me. I also like the persona. I like the, like how big, like how big he, he makes it, you know? Um, and I feel like I believe him. So yeah, I think like aside from wanting a lot more of it, I think they handled the balance pretty well. Um, and I like seeing, like seeing that, that journey, like from the, that Pistons team onto the Bulls team. And I'm looking forward to see like how they all, I like how they're fitting everyone in so far. I think the pacing is like very good. Yeah, I definitely kind of like just called like in my head the next two episodes. I was like, okay, so we're going Jordan Pippen and it's got to be Rodman Phil. And I'm excited because I'm like, I don't really have a clear idea of what episode five is. Like, I don't know. I think maybe it's like the jazz Mm -hmm. or maybe a mixture of like, I think like, you know, Kerr and Kukoc will probably be like one. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I'm, I'm curious how you do like the kind of like lesser role players, Mm -hmm. but um, I will say the last thing I will say, I, cause I kind of wish she was in it. I wish they got Madonna, (laughs) but (laughs) I liked how, how the portrait, I like that they weren't like, Oh, and then he got involved with Madonna. I like that. He was, they were like, yeah, Madonna told him you should just be whoever you want to (laughs) be. And like, you should create that persona. And in a lot of ways, like guys still go by that rule, right? It's like, if you want to create a brand for your, if they're going to call it a brand now at that time, it was just sort of like the persona that sets you apart in the league. I love that Madonna was Rodman's mentor. It's just, <laughs> it was such mentor, a Mentor, lover. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, and I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up, um, Katie, because it's kind of, I think, I'll, I'll go out on a limb and kind of say, um, I think there's a lot of derogatory language in reference to who players um, date and mm-hmm. spend their time with. And a lot of kind of like, just like, 
toxic misogyny. Um, and I, I was really happy that Carmen Electra and Madonna were not portrayed as like these disruptors. Mm -hmm. um, and actually they were portrayed as these people who helped Dennis Rodman, which yeah. I think is much closer to the truth. Yeah. Um, and these kind of like strong, you know, accepting figures in his life, mm -hmm. which he didn't really have. And yeah. And I think that was kind of like refreshing to see. I expected it him to be kind of like demonized a bit more in the documentary. So I was really happy. I, I basically agree with everything you're saying, Katie. I, I think he's just a bigger figure than can be portrayed as a part of someone else's story. Like mm -hmm. he's just bigger. Like he's almost equal to Michael Jordan in some ways. Is especially if you talk about like his life afterwards in North Korea and all that sort of stuff. Totally. But um anyways yeah uh andre i'm, I'm gonna throw this to you but i'm also just gonna add to a really good kind of like when katie was talking about um oh shoot i'm just having a, a blank moment here uh <laughs> katie what are you when you're saying about dennis rodman about um yeah oh yeah just about how like there's so much more there and you you kind of want to see more of the sadness because you know there's a lot of it. And then also, for me, I I wanted to see a kind of like a reshifting of the narrative of how the media portrayed him and particularly kind of how like aggressive and vicious they were to Dennis mm -hmm. Rodman and how they really played a part in shaping negative attitudes towards him and making him scary. Mm -hmm. right. um, but uh, I think they kind of did that. It was just, yeah, it's, it's a time thing. But uh, yeah. s sorry, Andre... I hope we didn't say every single point. <laughs> yeah, no, um, no. I think I think in in some ways, when it comes to to Rodman, I I loved um, getting all the context to him playing basketball and and what it meant for him to become a basketball player, and then what he did with that throughout his career, and the types of things he focused on, and how he really changed the game um, in very fundamental ways, from the idea of a big athletic quick switchable defender um that that was you know a big deal and is still having reverberations to today um yeah beyond the basketball stuff i think i think certainly his most like impactful thing was what you guys touched on this idea that he was really um on the forefront of like uh, gender norms and, and portraying them in, in, in kind of more fluid ways and, and, and expressing one's self and sexuality and, yeah. and in a less um, uh, kind of, I would say just generally conservative and more just open-minded and, and um, personifying that in, in the way that he did was really powerful. Like I think just the images of, of Dennis Rodman changed, um, I think the zeitgeist at the end of the day of what, you know, people can be in like. So, um, so on that, that standpoint, I think hugely influential. Um, but then it's in other ways, I think this is kind of a, um, <clears throat> a bit of a trend from the nineties is we kind of confuse sometimes personality and interest with substance abuse. And I think, especially watching that you're like this guy just has a big problem with alcohol and everybody's just like yeah he's a quirky guy and it's like yes sort of but it's 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 also like you see him like drink a beer get on a motorcycle without a helmet and just drive off and it's you know in some ways it's like yes he's an interesting character that's pushing the limits but then in other ways he, he he's a, a um he's i think not being responsible um, with his uh, consumption and and substance abuse. And it's obviously not all on him. It's the environment he's around. And he clearly had some issues. And to this day, you still hear stories about him and his substance abuse and, and alcohol. And, and I think, um, I think it, it's important to know that like there are some really culturally significant things that he did is uh, some really significant basketball influences but then at the other other side he was a bit of a destructive personality and and we should just make sure not to like confuse the two um and that like him running away to las vegas for 40 or however many days it ended up being he, it's funny and it's interesting but it's also like hey this is not a healthy 
thing to do and uh and it also shouldn't be glorified so yeah that's that's kind of my my thoughts on on uh rodman yeah and no, i think that's uh i i think it's pretty fair and, and you know particularly with kind of like phil jackson well which we're, we're gonna head to in a little bit um you know being this kind of like open-minded guy who kind of like wants to let personalities and players breathe it's like yeah that's good but also we've def you know i think a lot of people have had you know that friend in high school whose parents are like so chill (laughs) but they're also like never around and like you know the cupboards aren't exactly stocked all the time and like it's like a lot of house parties there i don't know if that's the best analogy but you know you you, i I don't think i don't think you rodden is someone who responded well to like aggressive authority and i think a lot of nba players are aren't treated with respect like even after right. they're you know very powerful people but i think yeah the the reverse can sometimes something like that is like yeah you know maybe don't go to vegas but uh yeah K- katie is there anything you want to add before we move on no i don't think so i mean i think Andre made like those are some very good points just in terms yeah. of like what even Cause that kind of behavior just like wouldn't stand now within not just the NBA, but like any professional league or any like professional capacity, I think where you're like, you have a spotlight like that aside from like, I guess people in the entertainment industry, but then it's sort of hidden. It's still hidden. It's like, yeah. Not, I mean, I think at that time it was still celebrated as being like, these guys are wild. And it is always mm. like men. Right. Cause like women right. don't get to be those kinds of train wrecks and still be no. cool. Right. You're <laughs> um, right. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's like, that's a really good point. But I do think they they haven't – I don't know. Maybe it's still coming, just like the exploring. Like they said it with with um, Jordan, just like that he was – he's like had a pretty clean lifestyle aside from like a crippling gambling addiction that will later – that we'll get to soon, I'm sure. But just like to explore maybe some of that like substance abuse. They've done it in like offhanded ways, but it would be interesting to just like – I don't know. Maybe that's too much of a drag, but like <laughs> – to to like even to to mention it or just say like this is this is what was happening and to like make the comparison of like this couldn't happen now and this is probably why a lot of this story was shaped this way not mm-hmm. just rodman like honestly basketball in that era no that's like perfectly said too like this is why like hearing you say kind of like this is why it was shaped this way like it's not just you know also going back to andre saying it's not kind of just like whoa this is wild it's like mm-hmm. it's like well it was wild for a reason mm-hmm. and then also <clears throat> the fact that it was wild had Im- implications mm-hmm. you know you it, know? it was also like very telling that the things they demonized him for and they you know kind of turned him into this scary person was about him exploring his identity and his personality and him being visually um you know, controversial and, and, and then they just gloss over all the other stuff. And um, yeah, it was just a different time then for sure. And I'm going to give the, uh, I'm going to give the, the number one cringe award uh, so far um, to Barbara Walters for making <laughs> yeah. Rodman oh, take God. off his hat. What yeah. color I is it? Like, it's the first time she ever seen so dyed hair? Like, What's that? Was that the first time she's ever seen dyed hair? Like who? <laughs> I don't know. Chill it was out. So strange. Like chill I just, out. yeah. Chill out is right. Sorry, Matt. No, Matt. Matt cares a lot about this. Hey, and boy, what was, what was the thing? I, was I, <laughs> fax machines. Fax machines. But yeah, I, I, I was like, you know, those moments where you just wish you could rewrite. Mm-hmm. I just wish, like, Rodman was like, okay, your turn. You know what I mean? And if she was like, but this is my real hair. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like just to like throw it back at her and be, and be like, yeah, that's how you made me feel. Cheers. Um, okay. Let's, uh, let's, um, one, one, oh, one sec, Freddie. Uh, I've got to run at five. So um, I know that's in about four minutes. Okay. Well, yeah. why don't I just throw this first question to you and then we'll just uh, play. You we'll, out. We, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll jump to Matt's segment after. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll throw this first question to you and then we'll just go from there. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, it was actually all about Phil Jackson. So, um, uh, here's my question. The Zen master, you know, he got his shine in episode four. So who is like, not necessarily Phil Jackson in the league right now, but who kind of like has that, that spirit or that kind of like open-mindedness. And then also 
who's a coach that like doesn't have that and could for sure mm-hmm. use their own acid trip where they, where they discover their <laughs> inner maverick. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, I think the, the easy answer here is Nick nurse, but that's obvious because we all just really know Nick nurse. So I'm not, I'm not going to say Nick nurse. I am going to say doc rivers. Oh, um, okay. I, I think especially when it comes to working with, you know, established superstars, um, he, you know, he tends to like really find those inner motivations. He finds those things that can gel together multiple egos. Um, and I think that it, you definitely saw a lot of that in Phil in, in the last dance where he really was this catalyst of turning in it from the Jordan show to like the Chicago bulls as a team. Um, and I think doc is, is probably one of the, definitely the, the torch bearers of that. And, and you see it with what he did with the Celtics. And then now what he's doing with, you know, not only the Clippers of this year, but previous years, he really found a way to like get a lot of these guys to, to harmonize and, and come together and, and put their egos aside a little bit. Um, I think he also had this Ubuntu philosophy that he brought in. So like he was also looking at like different types of tribe kind of uh, <laughs> language and, and, and ways of, of coming together um, in non-traditional kind of structures. And, and so I think there was a lot of like interesting um philosophy that that doc and and doc does it a little bit more straight and a little bit more like you know um like a traditional coach he he's a little bit less the zen master but uh but i think there's a lot of like really interesting phil stuff that that doc kind of carries with yeah no i think doc's a really good kind of uh you know, new, not new age, but yeah, like kind of just different coach in the NBA right now. And um, he's someone I've really come to kind of appreciate the last few years, just how I think when his tenure in Boston, I didn't really, I didn't really get him as much. And then when yeah. I got, I got to see him in with the Clippers for all those years. And now I'm kind of like, Oh, this guy, like this just quite a bit going on. He's really relatable. And he's also like kind of crafty and intelligent, but Andre, I know, yeah. I know you got to go, right? Yeah, I got it. Um, so we'll say goodbye and uh, thank you so much for joining the pod. And we'll, uh, Thanks, we'll guys. Co- close this video. Bye, Bye. Take care. Thanks, See ya. See ya. I like that. It's sort of like goodbye music. <laughs> Casual playoff. I, mean, I usually do it. If someone has to, to duck out early, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll play them off with their music again. <laughs> yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll play them out and you'll give them a quick fax, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, Katie, yeah, same question. Um, what, are, you know, is, uh, is, is Doc Rivers, uh, your, your Zen master as well, or is it Nick Nurse or? No. And I have to say that like a part of me was like cringing, like Phil, like Phil <laughs> Jackson for as like, I have complicated feelings about him too. Like, I think a part of me like, likes has liked how weird he's been in the past. I understand yeah. like what, um, like a, kind of phenomenal or like different style coach he was at a time that Mm -hmm. required it but i feel like he's kind of one of those guys also that's like stuck around too long Um, oh yes and every time i'm like you know like everything that happened with the knicks for example and then even in the doc when they're like the worst part was what he's like yeah and i took i took robin into my room that i was dedicated to like native americans and he he was like are you and i'm into this stuff too and he's like, yeah. like I'm, I'm in basically they're both like we're into indians and like the weird trappings you know what i mean like the like white totally. dude trappings around it and like i don't know that part i was a bit like you know more than rolling my eyes at especially like but i get like i get the this it's weird because it's like the stuff that he was using in practice like i don't know yoga techniques or mindfulness or meditation that hadn't that are now like so ubiquitous at the time that I guess maybe seem super progressive, but then to do yeah. that more problematic stuff is very strange. And like, then when they trace his weird upbringing, you're like, this is why he's such a freak. So I did appreciate that. Um, and like yeah, when they were cool. like, he loves acid. <laughs> you're like, okay, cheers. <laughs> anyway. So Phil, like he looks good. And I just have to say, he looks good. Like he looks he does. great in this. Yeah. He and, looks and- younger in some ways than he did when he was coaching the Bulls. And can, can I just quickly agree with you that I think um, I actually was going to frame the the whole question about like 
how ha- I was going to just basically be like, ask you guys, like, how has Phil aged? <laughs> but, but I think, yeah, that's such a complex question because of like, you know, you know, different types of problematic behavior. Also, like, I think he has like, clearly has a great like admiration and respect but there's some like ignorance there and then like you said there's kind of like some more modern like mindfulness and like kind of like yoga type practices like i think he was going at it with you know how do i say this like the right but also still colonial intentions Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Like it's like I'm into the costume of this, probably a bit too much. Mm-hmm. But um, it's still yeah, it still was also kind of like different thinking. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to like jump in to agree with you. But uh, Not yeah, totally. is there like an out of the box thinker or like? I think I have a couple of answers, but I think first the first coach that came to mind is um, Boden Bodenhoser because I think he could actually use it. <laughs> Ooh, oh this is like explore like loosening up and perhaps like an exploratory deep dive into his own psyche drop (laughs) drop a little acid and get on a harley bud you're in milwaukee yeah like he could he could stand to get a little twisted Um, (laughs) and the last time i saw him he looked so tired so i don't know yeah um and then this wasn't just this wasn't strictly acid this was like the vegas thing like who who should go to Vegas? Sure. Because that was a part of the question too, right? Did yeah. I make that up? Okay, it was. Well, it was, it's kind of a combo, but it's like in some ways it's the same thing. Like who should go party? I think Mid-season. Rick Carlisle would be fun to party with because he wouldn't embarrass you. Like at no point would you be like, ooh, this guy's going to turn into a liability <laughs> at some point. You just have like a classic old Vegas time. And then the worst on the spectrum is Brad Stevens. The idea of him in Vegas gives me chills in a bad way. <laughs> yeah, he'd be like, like, wait, wait, I thought Brad was, oh my God. And he's just like somehow like <laughs> algorithmically like solved all the slot machines. Or he's just like, or he's getting super sloppy for some reason is also what I picture. Oh, oh, like, oh, he's got like a bad boy that nobody knows about. Yeah, like, gross, like baby bad boy. <laughs> oh, I could see a baby, oh, <laughs> baby polo bad shirt boy. baby bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Did, <laughs> this just came into my head, but did John Sally get a cameo in Bad Boys because he was a bad boy? Yes. Yeah, but John Sally is, plays like a benevolent actor in Bad Boys 1 and 2. <laughs> oh, that's true. But, yeah. <laughs> John Sally, he's, he's been not, in a lot. Yeah. yeah, he has. He had a great acting career. Um, I think, but by the way, I just want to say when I, if I picture Rick Carlisle going around Vegas and partying, like he would look like full LA confidential. Yes. <laughs> like he would have like the longest, like widest hat. And I remember, you know what I mean? Like, like I just think he'd be mysterious as hell. Um, my coach was Steve Kerr. Um, just cause I think he has that kind of like, he seems to have this, obviously he was taught by by Phil Jackson, but I, I feel like Steve Kerr has a little bit of the, um, like I'm going to approach Draymond like this, mm-hmm. but then I'm going to approach Steph like this. And then I'm going to approach KD like this. Oh, like, Steve Kerr's like, a great hello, answer. Like KD, you're the best player in the world. Wink, wink, Steph, you're better. No worries. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Draymond, we really need you. Clay, you know, I need you more than Draymond. Cheers. Yeah. Like I think Kerr is like wicked at that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if I can think of someone like better than like Brad Stevens or like Carla who like needs it. I, th- I can think maybe like Scott Brooks. Oh God. Um, or I'm just thinking, I'm, I want to think about these someone. guys. I think they would just get lost. Like you would be, <laughs> be like, can you meet me here at this time? And they would just get lost. They would be like, not that much fun in uh, Vegas. Oh. Yeah. If it's like Mike D'Antoni. How do you not get like, lost in Vegas though? Jeez. Yeah. Mike D'Antoni would be like, I'm 79 and I would like to go to bed. (laughs) He'd love to go to a show. He'd love to go to an early show. Blue man group. And that, yeah, he'd like a blue (laughs) man group or I'm thinking like a classic, like a performer. I don't know. Cirque du Soleil or like a Wayne Newton. I was, yeah, maybe. Because I was like, I don't know, would like Aerosmith be too much for him? (laughs) You know, so it would have to be like, yeah, like it's not that. Aerosmith in their 70s is too much for him. I like it. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, he's like it was I'm... almost too much for me. So oh, I think yeah. he, it would be too much for him. <laughs> He's like, moves like Jagger? I don't think so. I'm tired. <laughs> um, <laughs> Matt, uh, let's uh, let's do let's do your draft from the plast. I said All right. Plast? Yeah, yeah plast. Lake, Lake Plasted. <laughs> no, but I, um, that's yeah, draft draft from the prast. Yeah. Oliver Plasted. <laughs> Great. Uh, awesome. All right. Let's uh let's uh, let's do it up. In honor of the documentary Last Dance, uh, I wanna go back to 1984 because it's not only the year that Michael Jordan got drafted, but it's also the year of my birth. So let me take you back there and tell you what was going on in 84. All right, guys, strap in. Better than the cough. (laughs) Here's what was going on in 84. Okay. Purple rain, Beverly Hills cop, ghostbusters, Terminator, gremlins, nightmare on Elm street, Amadeus. That's it. Uh, <laughs> a lot of movies. <laughs> yeah, a lot of movies came out in 84. Important movies. Uh, Tetris dropped its first block. Alex Trebek gave his first answer on Jeopardy. Now, this one's for Freddie and I because we're in the commercials. Fast food company Wendy's launched its TV ad titled Fluffy Bun. <laughs> oh, my God. But it soon earned another nickname. The ad featured three older women receiving a burger with a huge bun and little meat, to which actress Clara Peller asks, where's the beef? Now, the director had instructed Peller to say, where is all the beef? But because of her emphysema, she shortened it. (laughs) And thank goodness she did. The commercial (laughs) earned tons of attention and the phrase entered popular culture. So that's when where's the beef started, okay? And that's how Thank it's you so much. <laughs> I, I I can totally see how that's related to the draft. And um, I, and just something for you to think about when you, next time you're on set and you've got a line, you know, don't be afraid to shorten to it say up. where's the beef. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll say where's the beef regardless of the product. Yeah. How's that? Um, Some other things that happened in 1984. Pierre Trudeau stepped down as prime minister. Wait, Matt, let me just interrupt <laughs> you just to say that I, I, I don't want it to go by without being appreciated. You yeah. said Lego dropped their first block. Did I say Lego? You, you said Lego dropped their first block. Oh, no. I Oh, I thought I said Tetris. Tetris dropped its first block. Oh, oh sorry. You did. Yeah. And sorry. It's still funny is what yeah. I'm saying. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Tetris dropped its first block, meaning that's uh, when the game came out. Yeah, um, I know. I thought it was funny. Sorry. Important for Canadians, okay? Pierre Trudeau, son of Justin, oh no, father of Justin, uh, stepped down as prime minister after 15 years. And by the end of the year, we entered what was the start of the Mulroney era, if you guys remember hey. that. Yep. Um, I don't know if you guys remember this from 1984. A Frisbee was kept aloft for 16.72 seconds by Don Kane of Philadelphia. <laughs> you guys remember that? I know we don't remember that. Faint, like faintly. Uh, yeah, okay, that's I'm pretty sorry. impressive. For, Sixteen I seconds for myself. <laughs> I don't remember that. Um, McDonald's made its fifty billionth hamburger, and in that same year, the founder Ray Kroc died. So I guess that was his Jedi moment. Shuffled <laughs> off after that <laughs> happened. <laughs> oh my God! Okay. And the last thing I'll say, which was very important to the NBA, some years later, LeBron James was born. Wow. That's, okay. That's pretty big. Is that enough of 1984 for you to understand what this draft was about? Sure. Let the year. <laughs> let me take you to June 19th, 1984, in New York, New York. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is insane. There were 228 picks in this draft. 58 Hmm. of those picks made an NBA appearance. And of those 58 picks, seven became all-stars. Now, of course, we know that Michael Jordan was one of them. But I'm going to go through the top 10, and then I'm going to name some other notables, okay? So first overall pick everyone knows was Hakeem Olajuwon, who went to the Houston Rockets. Number two, Sam Bowie went to uh, Portland. MJ went third to Chicago. Sam Perkins went fourth to Dallas. Uh, Charles Barkley went fifth to Philly. (laughs) Sorry, I forgot my music. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, no, no. Perfect timing after Barkley. (laughs) No, this is a great name of like, he sounds like a a British gangster. Melvin Turpin. 
went sixth to uh, the uh, Washington Bullets. Melvin Turpin is Peaky Blinders. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought of when I when I heard it. Um, the Spurs took Alvin Robertson seventh overall, followed by Lancaster Gordon, who went uh, eighth to the Clippers. Otis Thorpe went to the uh, Kansas City Kings, which I guess were uh, before the Sa- Sacramento Kings. Am I right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So ninth overall and tenth overall, Leon Wood went to Philly. So Philly had two picks in the first round. There, pretty pretty intense. Um, some other notables in the draft that went later. Eleventh uh, yep. overall, Atlanta took uh, Kevin Willis. Yeah, every Raptor fan should know Kevin Willis. Yeah, Jay Humphreys went 13th overall to Phoenix. Uh, Michael Cage, no relation to Mortal Kombat's Johnny Cage. Okay, uh, went notable. 14th overall to the Clippers. Um, and John Stockton, that's a big one, who went 16th overall to the Huge uh, one, Utah. John Stockton. Uh, now, the late but great pick that I will give you. Now, yeah, I said there were 220 picks, but they, you know, I think the last 100 never played a game. Uh, Fair. But the, uh, let's see, the 47th pick or 46th pick was Jerome Kersey. He played 17 seasons in the NBA. That's pretty damn good. Oh, so yeah. that's my late but great pick <laughs> to the uh, Portland. To the Portland. <laughs> um, and uh, okay, I've got a little bit of uh, trivia time. Now I've cut it down, so it's just one question each for uh, you, Freddie, and for you, Katie. Now, no, Matt, Matt, yeah. I, I know this is your segment, yeah. but can I just point out a funny player name? Yes, please. Drafted 25th overall in this draft. Okay. From BYU is a player named Devin Durant. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, he that played <laughs> he played two seasons, 63 games. Devin Durant. Yep, Devin that, Durant. That Kevin sounds Durant. like Cheers. Kevin Durant's like his first burner, his burner. account. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm All ready, right. Matt. You guys ready for uh, this trivia here? I think so. Okay. <clears throat> okay, Freddie, I'm going to ask you first, okay? Okay, here we go. Okay, so Michael Jordan leads in multiple categories of this draft in like total points, minutes played per game, points per game. Now, which of these stats is he also the top leader in? And he is only leader in one of these. Is it career field goal percentage, free throw percentage, or three point percentage? Ooh, this is a good one. Let me go field goal percentage because he was, uh, yeah, he's like the the fadeaway king. He was amazing. Uh, And I don't think he was very good at the three. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm afraid that's <laughs> wrong. He uh, is the leader tied for first with Danny Young for a free throw percentage at 835. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, field goal percentage actually. Now, you know, I, the guys that only played one or two games or something, they don't count. But uh, Otis Thorpe is actually the leader for field goal percentage with a 546. Oh, and I'm, I'm crazy. It's probably like Barkley and Elijah Wan probably had better field goal percentages. Um, they actually, yes, they do. <laughs> Charles um, Barkley is a five, okay. four, one. And <laughs> Listen, yeah, I, I let myself down. No worries. No worries, man. It's okay. Um, now this one is for Katie. Okay. okay. This is another Michael Jordan, uh, oriented question. Ball hog or not. MJ <laughs> talked in the last couple episodes about how much of a ball hog he was and disliked passing the ball when he had it. He still managed to finish with the second most assists in the draft, even with that reluctance. Who had more assists than MJ, a.k.a. the assist leader of this draft? Was it Charles Barkley, John Stockton, or Hakeem Olajuwon? Hmm. Hmm. Hakeem, I'm going to say. Hakeem Olajuwon? Oh. Sorry. Um, the winner is John Stockton by 30 miles. He had 15,806 oh assists, followed by wow. Michael Jordan, who had 5,633. Generous. Isn't that wild? <laughs> 10,000 more than Jordan. That makes sense. And uh, with that being said, that was the 1984 draft, and I'd like to get you back to the pleasant times of 2020. <laughs> Oh, wow. I like that you bring us all the way back. <laughs> yeah, we're going to teleport it. 
Your yeah. segment is much more put together than my 2K <laughs> player segment. And all I'm going to say is next week I'm putting in more work. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna bring. My, I'm gonna have my own wind chime sound effect. Okay, okay, sweet. Yeah, I want. It's gonna be beautiful. I want um, the real thing. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm bringing real foley next next week. <laughs> but let's uh, let's finish this off and let's do some quickish questions. Um, Katie, Matt, what do you say? Let's do Sounds it. Sounds good. All right. Questions. Okay, uh, you both know how this works. I'm going to read off whatever's written, even if it's barely a question. <laughs> okay. um, some uh, I'm looking at one right now that is straight up not a question. Uh, so I'm just asking you to comment on that. But um, Katie, Matt, you got to answer as quick as you can, and uh, I'll try and be as clear as possible. No phoning a friend. Are you both ready? Let's do it. Yes. Okay, we're going to go Katie, Matt. We're going to go Katie, Matt. Katie, mm-hmm. has your opinion of Dennis Rodman changed after watching episodes three and four? If so, how? Mm, no, I feel like I know him a little bit better. He's less of an enigma. How's that? Perfect. Matt. Yes. How fucked up is it that <laughs> Southeast Oklahoma, uh, that Southeast Oklahoma State's athletic teams were called the Savages? Apparently, they didn't change this until 2006. I mean, I'm going to say it's pretty fucked up and, you know, that there's still uh, other teams that have problematic names. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> Katie, uh, this is I'm just going to get a comment from you. <laughs> um, so uh, this this comment is, as much as the media talks about the Pistons walking off the court after the Bulls defeat uh, in 91, Thoughts on why the media, in quotations, never brings up the fact that some members of the Pistons didn't walk off and actually stayed and shook hands. Joe Dumars, John Sally, and Vinnie Johnson uh, were the ones that didn't walk off, I believe. So thoughts on why that's not talked about? Well, I think we should all be talking about how nice John Sally is, as I've previously said on this po- on this same podcast. But yes, I agree. I think it's uh, I mean, it's not as like strong of a story, right? If you're being like, they're all sore losers. They were so tough, and then they were all sore losers. <laughs> like, that's that's a more interesting story. So I think that's why it probably hasn't been revised. Plus, to be f- honest, this is just like a, n- a numbers thing. I wouldn't consider three people from any team sticking around to do the like proper thing being representative of the team just that's because fair. it's like that's not the majority of players that's not yeah, even your starting really lineup yeah. you know yeah that's that's a good point um matt the yeah. top minds of twitter have been sending isaiah thomas uh like i s a i a h thomas current isaiah thomas all kinds of misdirected hate because of the way (laughs) isaiah thomas the pistons guy treated mj what nba person do you keep mistaking for somebody else oh boy um (laughs) okay so they're mistaking him though because their names are similar it's a similarly mystery, spelled, yeah. right? It's not like they they look alike or no. Um, but two players that I, uh, I mean, those ball brothers. I mean, are they triplets or what? Like, <laughs> hey, that's fair. <laughs> the, the ball brothers for sure is a good answer. I, honestly, I thought you were going to go the Lopez brothers, but there's more ball brothers. So cheers. Yeah. Um, okay, Katie. Uh, this is from someone who clearly studied feet. <laughs> Um, who has uglier feet, Shaq or Scottie Pippen? I haven't seen their feet. Like me oh, either. Have you not oh. seen Shaq's feet? Oh wait. Oh dear. Maybe I have. Let me just quickly Google it. Shaq's feet. <laughs> Am I gonna they, like what I see? Are they it's ugly just, or big? Well, they're they're just. They're weird. They're weird. Oh, this can't be right. It's weird. That can't be. <laughs> oh, that's. Oh man. I don't know what's real. I don't know what's real. Oh man! Um, I don't know if this is real. They're this is turning just... into a horror pod. I mean, I'll say probably. I mean, unless Pippen has like is really hiding something. <laughs> I, I gotta quickly look at his. Sorry. Oh, this gentleman in your feet. I didn't realize. Um. Scotty Pippen. Jack rips Scotty Pippen. 
<laughs> well, you're looking uh, up. I'm gonna say shacks are worse. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Matt. Thanks so much for that person for making me look at those. No, that was great. Uh, <laughs> Timber, shout out for that that foot question. Um, <laughs> Matt, some roster moves. Do the Bulls beat the Pistons with Doug Collins? Um, same roster moves. Okay. Same roster. Doug Collins is a coach, not Phil Jackson. I'm gonna say yes. The guys, Ooh. just the guy's just too sweaty. Works too hard. He's, yeah. You got to give him something if he kept coaching. Uh, this is a good follow-up to that. Katie, will we ever see a sweatier head coach than Bulls era Doug Collins? Mm, oh, yeah. I, I mean, you can never say never. Yeah, you can't rule it out, right? Yeah. Plus climate I've change seen, and stuff. I mean, Stan Van got pretty sweaty. Yeah. You know, yeah. Plus T- climate change. Thibodeau sweater? True. Thibodeau? <laughs> um, what, sorry, what's that, Matt? I just said uh, T- Thibodeau. Would he be sweating? Yeah. Oh Thib- yeah, Thibodeau's. A, oh, he's a candidate for sure. He's a sweater. <laughs> Matt. Yeah. Do you want to see a documentary with just Bill Wellington's home movies? Hundred percent, yes. Katie. Mm-hmm. Do you think Bill? I think. I think. Sorry. It's Bill Wennington, Ka- isn't it? It's Wennington, but Catherine accidentally said Wellington, which is. It's kind of like a beef Wellington, which is making me laugh. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> Katie, do you think Bill Wennington brought back bagels for the team from his native Montreal? Is MJ a St. Viateur or Fairmont bagels guy? Oh, good, good question. Um, yeah, that guy s- seems so nice. So <laughs> Yeah, he is. I'll say that, yes, he probably did. Um, I guess at that time they weren't probably as nervous about eating carbs if they were also like going on wild benders. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I, he's probably the same theater because Fairmont always struck me as more, um, like fair, same theater is like the, they're both OGs, but it's maybe the more popular one. And I think you know Fairmont is for more like secret people in the secret know. That's my take anyway. No, yeah, that's, that's, that's fair. Um, Matt, which bull has aged the best slash worst? Um, <laughs> or I guess these are two questions. Um, I think so that... Best. Who's the best? Who's the worst? I'm going to say that Scottie Pippen looks pretty well-aged. I feel like, I feel like he's, looking, he's looking youthful to me every time he pops on there. Um, his voice is wonderful. Yeah, his voice is wonderful. He's got really nice veneers. Um, and I would say that the worst, and I don't want to pick on him because I do like him, but I feel like Dennis Rodman's looking, you know, like he's pierced some holes a few too many times or something. I don't know. He just, he's looking, he's looking a bit old, but I still like him and I like that he owns it. All right. Katie. Mm-hmm. Harper gets put on Jordan for the final shot. Does this change anything in Jordan's legacy? What shot? So the shot he hit over Elo in Cleveland. Oh, oh the Cleveland it, shot. There's okay. that image of Harper being like, I asked to guard Jordan, and the coach was like, no. No. Um, I mean, he still could have not blocked him, so no. <laughs> yeah. I think that, I think Michael Jordan would have been like, who are you? Great. Um, <laughs> But, uh, okay, a uh, couple more questions here. Matt, um, oh, this will be fun for both of you to answer, actually. But um, how does Bill Simmons take of Rodman is boring compared to his other historically bad takes? Um, can you ref- give me, like, one one other bad take that I uh, of Simmons? I mean, he definitely thinks Boston's going to win every year. Yeah. Um, so that's usually what gets me. I mean, calling uh, Rodman boring is just, that's just a bad take right there. Like, he's not boring <laughs> at all. I mean, even just yeah, like, like off the court and on the court, like he was so good defensively. Like, he was such a smart player. Like, boring? That doesn't go with that guy at all. A terrible, <laughs> terrible take. Love it. Um, okay, Katie, mm-hmm. how different would the documentary be if Jordan didn't have say over the final edit? <laughs> um... Probably less, it would probably be less of him. Because he kind of has the final say now in every little bit, every segment, right? 
Right. And there probably wouldn't be as much of this like I, Michael yeah. Jordan said this about you, and then they show the person. The yeah, I, I I think it is kind of weird that they're sh- they're showing a clip of someone saying something, and then they're giving the phone, and we're watching Michael Jordan watch that clip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that part's a little bit. That's a little bit. That's like show. It's like you know, usually say show don't tell, but they're like show and tell, and then show the telling. So yeah, it would, it would probably be. It would be a little bit different. Show, don't tell, unless you just want to go fully meta with it and get weird. (laughs) Um, Matt, will the Charlotte Bobcats having a top five all-time worst season under under Michael's leadership ever be addressed? Um, In this documentary? Yes. (laughs) No. Okay, Katie. By the way, this is this is Barb's on Michael Jordan, so that's what's happening right now. (laughs) But Katie, and how hypocritical. Did he come? Did Michael Jordan come off in his present-day interview trashing Jerry Krause for tanking when he couldn't have been tanking harder for Anthony Davis when he was in the same position? Oh, wait, is it bad? Or is well, he, he he's just saying it's like how hypocritical is Michael Jordan saying that like he would never. I tank. mean, Michael Jordan is pretty hypocritical for a lot of other reasons too. I feel yes. like you know so. Um, sure, he's hypocritical, but everybody is when it comes to the things that they want in any given moment. And Matt, this is your last question. What? Oh no, sorry, there's one more. Um, <laughs> what is the over under on Washington Wizards mention in this mentions in this entire series? Um, I'm gonna take the under. Um, okay. I'm gonna say that they won't be mentioned ten times. All right. Is that how this Katie. works? <laughs> Will Steve Kerr's black eye ever get mentioned? He oh, getting punched in the face. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I hope so. Me too. That's like <laughs> the big story we all want, right? Yeah, I do. I want to hear about some Come on. Steve Kerr in the face. I know he's so nice. Oh my god. <laughs> um, and uh, Matt. Okay, this is actually the last question, or it's mostly just a. Uh, <laughs> Comment. Um, never realized how eerily similar the Bulls and Raptors' respective um, ascents into title contention were. Oh, okay. Um, and, and thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah, like I mean, I think uh, I think you can pick uh, pick and choose a few flowers from that uh, similarity, but I don't know if it. You know, I He's don't know probably if I thinking about how we kept losing to Cleveland. They kept losing yeah, to Boston. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. But I think we for sure didn't break through it. I think that the 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 end story is a little different, though. But sure, why not? No, that's good. Um, But that's the pod. We made it to the end of the quickest (laughs) questions and the end of the pod. And now we we got to go back into like our our regular coronavirus lives. Um, Oh, good. (laughs) Katie, I know I I know good, right? Katie, I know, I know I made you do some some plugging at the beginning of the episode, but is there anything you forgot or you just want to mention? Yeah, I did forget. Um, Dishes and Dimes, a great podcast I'm involved with, uh, NBA podcast hosted by um, some pretty smart and funny, uh, like a rotating cast of women. And um, I don't know. I think that's it. <laughs> That's great. Awesome. I'm very busy. I feel like I'm too busy in a pandemic, but that's okay. Well, it's it's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually getting there. I was not busy at all. And I'm like, oh, think of some stuff to do. And then I'm like, well, I better downshift. <laughs> um, cool. Well, yeah, that's uh, that's it for the pad. Uh, pad. Pad. That's it for the, that's it for the pad. <laughs> um, wow. I'm really like. Bill Simmons is here. <laughs> yeah. I, I, my vocabulary and accent today, I've been taking like a lot of weird turns. <laughs> um, like, like Placid slipping in there. You know, what's that one about? Carl uh, Carl Lowry. Carl Lowry. Carl Lowry. Carl Lowry. That's a good one. <laughs> Um, that, that, if I ever have like a, my own burner account, it's going to be called Carl Lowry for sure. <laughs> um, or Devin Durant. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's, uh, that's it for the pod. Thank you so much for everyone who listening, uh, or who listens all the time, you know, go support Andre and, uh, Katie and, uh, be compassionate to one another. And, um, yeah, uh, we'll Hello. talk to you next week. Can anyone around here speak basketball? Yeah.
It's the Confederacy of Dunks Basketball Podcast.